coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. Vertical Flight Society's 18th Annual Electric Aircraft Symposium leads into AirVenture. AeroVironment demos Jump 20 on Jet A. And SkyDrive applies for U.S. type certification. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight. From electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Vertical Flight Society's 18th Annual Electric Aircraft Symposium leads into AirVenture. The Vertical Flight Society is on track for the biggest electric aircraft development conference yet, with more than 40 speakers set to present at the 18th Annual Electric Aircraft Symposium. It will once again be held in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, with support for remote attendance. This year we'll see the EAS held immediately preceding AirVenture 2024, where much of the industry holds symposiums with an array of human factors, safety, and maintenance themes, the Vertical Flight Society always seems to have the most stridently technical speakers, with the resumes to back it up. This year, the EAS will again see considerable networking for those in the AAM space, since the symposium is often a little more technically inclined, intimate conference. The symposium will hold a dozen panel discussions over the weekend, covering a range of topics including international developments, flight training, regional air mobility, test technology, eVTOL development, personal and private AAM aircraft, propulsion in all its forms, vertiports and airport infrastructure. One will focus on the regulatory landscape, covering changes and shifts across the many different rulemaking apparatuses developers have to deal with. The two-day event will run $250 for member attendees or $450 for non-members. For students, a first-time $25 member fee gets them entry for only $50 more. After the break, U.S. Parachute Association moving forward on next-gen parachute seals. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our Next Gen Minute. U.S. Parachute Association moving forward on Next Gen Parachute Seals. Today's parachute riggers are getting rid of their old school lead slugs while rigging up their chutes, now that the Parachute Industry Association has given some alternatives. In February, the association published Technical Bulletin TV-266, stating that they see, quote, no impediment to immediate implementation of the use of the alternate means of sealing auxiliary or emergency parachutes explored by the rigging committee, end quote. The frontrunners for replacements today, a type of pressure-sensitive paper seal, tamper-evident mylar, or a simple plastic plug, all appear to be finding fans of some sorts just as they have overseas. NASA busts out some tabletop gaming for asteroid exercise. NASA got the planetary defense community together for a good old game of fifth planetary defense interagency tabletop exercise, playing out their responses to a prospective celestial impact. In reality, the word tabletop belies a level of fun NASA folks probably did not have, but the exercise did let everyone game out exactly how their agencies would work together in case of asteroid impact. The exercise takes place on a biennial basis, bringing together the Planetary Defense Coordination Office, FEMA, and the Department of State Office of Space Affairs. WISC expands Houston prospects. WISC Aero and Houston airports reinforce their relationship with a memorandum of understanding regarding air taxi ops in the metropolitan region. 
Wisk's MOU with Houston adds George Bush Intercontinental Airport, William P. Hobby Airport, and Ellington Airport to their roster of potential Vertiport installations. Under the agreement, Houston airports will, quote, focus on integrating AAM into its long-term plans, championing community engagement, and establishing operational policy, such as infrastructure permitting and noise levels, end quote. Volato chooses SmartSky for internet provisions. Volato has opted to go with SmartSky for its future in-flight connectivity needs, selecting the SmartSky light system for a pair of aircraft to start, with options for many more if all goes well. It's just another flashpoint in the ongoing market war between internet providers and the world of in-flight internet. SmartSky has opted to flesh out its own proprietary air-to-ground network, but it's been getting increasing competition from similarly positioned ATG operators and low-Earth orbit satellite constellations alike. And that's it for today's Next 10 Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. AeroVironment demos Jump 20 on Jet A. AeroVironment pulled off a demonstration of its Jump 20 uncrewed aircraft system using a heavy fuel engine, expanding the capabilities and interoperability of the platform in the world of military logistics. The firm successfully bore out the utility of the Jump 20 with the heavy fuel engine, a more omnivorous little mill that allows the aircraft to run on a wider range of fuels. In the world of U.S. military operations, the most ubiquitous flavor is JP-58, akin to Jet A in the civilian world, available in quantity, stable, and affordable compared to high-octane aviation gasoline. The Marines, for example, love using JP fuel so much they made sure their recon motorbikes could run on the kerosene-based fuel, too. The Jump 20 now sports more than 13 hours of endurance and an operational range of 115 miles thanks to its purpose-built engine. The new power plant saves weight and requires fewer overhauls throughout its lifespan. Shane Hastings, AV's VP and general manager of Medium UAS, said, quote, The addition of a heavy fuel engine to the Jump 20 provides global forces an unparalleled VTOL solution with a longer operational lifespan, greater performance, and efficient fuel consumption. It is well suited for land and sea domains where available fuel sources could be dictated by the respective logistics support plan, end quote. After these messages, SkyDrive applies for U.S. Type Certification. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Backcountry flying to us is our playground. For us, it's how we access the things we like to do. It's just our lifestyle. We exclusively use the, the Hartzell Voyager prop, and it's proved to be um, just a great combination for what we do. What it's doing, it's, it's helping us all have better performing airplanes. Man, it feels a lot better clearing trees by 50 feet versus 20 feet. I don't ever see myself not flying. Welcome back. SkyDrive applies for U.S. Type Certification. SkyDrive submitted its U.S. Type Certification application for the three-seater eVTOL it's been working on, mirroring its work with Japan's Civil Aviation Bureau in their home market. With their experience working on certification back home, SkyDrive has started off the American Type Certification process stateside, anticipating completion sometime after its JCAV approval in, quote, 2026 or later, end quote. The brand said that one of its core ambitions has been to, quote, introduce Japanese origin air mobility solutions to the world, mirroring the success and admiration the Japanese automotive industry has attained globally, end quote. They have plenty of competition from China and the States, with plenty of developers finding their footing thanks to an accommodating regulatory landscape and seemingly endless capital to use in the design process. 
The firm started prepping for an American market entry already, establishing a local subsidiary in 2023. Now, SkyDrive says it's actively collaborating with local customers to develop practical use cases for the three-seater eVTOL and tailor its future aircraft offerings to the U.S. domestic market in particular. SkyDrive remains quintessentially Japanese, saying that its goal is to, quote, bring the renowned quality and innovation of Japanese technology to the realm of air mobility, capturing the hearts and minds of people worldwide, end quote. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.